Well, not much new. Uh, after looking at the tape, uh, defense played much better, obviously. Thought uh, those guys were flying around. I thought Shaq Thompson played real well. I thought some of our young DBs played pretty well uh, on offense. Um, we did some good things. Still a little inconsistent at times. I think, uh, I think Siler was fairly efficient. Um, I think he played fairly well. And on special teams, I think our, you know, our return units, I think we need to tighten some things up there. I think we can get better there. Those two penalties that we had on special teams were really, really hard on us. You know, one, one called a touchdown back and another one backed us way up after we got a good punt return. And so those things, those things are hard to stomach when you work so hard to get, get those yards in the kicking game. So that being said, balls in your court. What are the challenges this week with the, with the team you're so heavily favored against and with Pac-12 play starting next week? Um, that, that, that's not even kind of an issue for, for me and this team. I mean, all you got to do is put the tape on and watch him throw for 400 yards and watch him throw some balls in there just like happened to us a couple weeks ago. He threw, I mean, there were some unbelievable throws he just made this last week. And, uh, and so it's just, it, it, you know, the process just continues in terms of us getting ready for, you know, a team that can really throw it and their run game's pretty effective. It's a combination of a couple of teams that we've seen and they're moving the ball and they're moving it in big chunks and they're scoring points. Um, and so it's just about us improving from the mistakes that we've made the last couple of weeks. And, uh, but, uh, you know, if our mindset is in the future, we'll, we'll get hit right in the mouth. Working with Shaq Thompson, what, what impresses you the most about what he's able to do on both sides? Yeah. Um, I think the first thing that jumps out about Shaq is just how much I like being around him. That's the first thing I think of. Um, He's just always got a great demeanor about him. He's always got a smile on his face. Since I've been here, I'm sure he's had a bad day, but I haven't known when that day has been. And so those are the guys that make you know the coaching thing very fun. And then when you back it up and he can do so many things on the football field, you're like, wow, this, this guy's kind of special. Are there players that you don't like being around? Um, well, we're, we're still adjusting to a few of them, but I like most of them. You, the, the game, broadly speaking, was there a little bit of, of validation of progress that came out of that for your staff and maybe for the players? And, you know, the frustration of the first two and then a, a better overall? Well, I mean, I, I kind of I think I said this before. I mean, I think if you look around the country, not only this year, but even previous years, there's always struggles early on that – why did that team struggle with it? I mean, it's just, it never goes like you think it's going to. And then you, you couple that with newness. I mean, it's, to me, it's not totally surprising. It just never goes like you think it's going to. And all these games are such struggles. I mean, even though our guys played fairly well and we made progress, it still feels like a struggle. You know, I mean, that's just the game. There's really good coaches on the other side. They got really good players. Um, there's always twists and turns that you didn't expect. So it's, it's just a struggle. And, uh, you know, part of this deal is, is learning to appreciate and enjoy the struggle, even though that's a really hard concept. Do you think it, three games into it, are you, are you at the point where you're a little more comfortable with the expectations, things that happen out there don't surprise you? I think that we're starting to get a better handle on our guys like we are, um, you know, because, again, practice. I mean, our, our guys have been practicing hard. But you just, you, you, you know, again, I, I didn't. I know Shaq was a good player, but I never had been around him in the game modes when we're really going full speed live all the time. Couple that with our young, you know, with our DBs. Couple that with Siler. You know, just all those things. It's like, how, how is this going to go? You start to get a better feel, so you start to kind of anticipate some things a little bit better that at least you have a better handle on things. Any better idea of whether Marcus Peters might play this week? Yeah, well, we, we got him back. He's back with us, and, uh, you know, we'll just take one day at a time. Marvin Hall, he cases out to the starter, and Marvin kind of slipped down on the depth chart. Is there anything with him? or? No, there's really not. It's just kind of production, and, you know, sometimes it's not always about the game. Sometimes guys don't, don't get the reps maybe they need in the game, but it certainly is about practice, and if guys are practicing at a high level, it doesn't matter if it's a freshman, senior, whatever, we're going to try to get those guys some more reps, and it really just comes down to that. We're going to need all of our guys at that position without question. 
Um, you know, I think we're a little, I think we're a little thin there. Uh, I've said that from the start, and so we just need everybody to keep progressing. Hey, what, what do you need to see from Marcus this week for him to to get back to where he needs to be to start? Well, I mean, I think most of that stuff that uh, you know is just is kind of between us and the team, but um, you know, I think it's just about doing things uh, like a good teammate should. I mean, in general. Has he done everything you've asked him to do? For the first six hours, yes. <laughs> How did you motivate your defense this time for this this week uh, from from the Eastern game this week? Well, let me say this. It wasn't that they weren't motivated to play Eastern, and I keep going back to that. I mean, Eastern played darn good. That That, that is a very good offense. And our guys were playing hard. And were they happy with that performance? No. And uh, did they go back to work and really try to, are, are they working their tail off trying to improve? Yes. And that's all we can ask, that we're you know, getting better a little bit, building some skill each week, learning from our mistakes. But uh, you know, I, I go back and I look at that, uh, you know, that Eastern tape and you know, I, I, there was just some really high level football execution going on on their side of things. And a couple of times we weren't in great position, but a couple of times we were in perfect position. And, you know, a perfect throw and catch is still undefeated uh, in our book. I mean, if it's a perfect throw and catch, you're not going to defend that. And they had a couple of those. But I mean, being able to hold Illinois to 11 as opposed to 52, I mean, what do you, what, what, which, what made the changes that you make? Or, or, yeah. We made some changes. We made some coverage adjustments, those type of things, to mix some things up and help our guys out a little bit. We got some turnovers. I mean, we get three turnovers and score on two of them. I mean, that's not going to happen every week. Um, so a little bit the ball bouncing our way, a little bit the guys getting better, a little bit coaching maybe helps some things out, combination, all those things. It's, you know, it's never usually one thing. When it's one thing, those are really easy to fix. And usually it's not that simple. Why, why, why has it case been more involved in the offense? Well, you know, I think some of it's coverage. Um, I, I really think it's a lot of that. And, um, you know, I think maybe him and Sider are getting on the same page a little bit. Um, I think some of it has to do with Kaysen needing to shake guys a little bit and get himself open. And I think it's, again, I don't think it's any one thing. But I, like I said, after the game, I think we do need to get him more involved. There's no question. I mean, Kaysen's a, he's another very good kid. I mean, here's a guy that hasn't caught a lot of balls here these first couple games. Hadn't said a word. He's just going to work. I think we're all trying to figure out how to how to make that happen for him. Is the, is the injury still nagging him maybe a little bit, or is that? You know, he 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 doesn't say anything about that, and it's interesting because he's got a little bit of limp. Uh, but I put the tape on last year, and he had that last year before he got hurt. So maybe it's just part of his uh, his swag. I don't know. <laughs> with, with him at the number one on the depth, is that? Kind of point to your confidence that, that, that he's ready to go and yeah i mean he he is i mean we just uh like i said we we'd like to get him more involved and i think we we look at those things and it's not any one thing but long season and we're gonna we're gonna need him to to make some plays for us and do some things without question for sure charges to win football games not to make the schedule uh, yeah but uh if you can take a step back and look at matchups like this with Georgia State. Is there anything that dismays you about that sort of thing in today's college football? Anything that's uh, did what? Amaze? Amaze? Oh, no. I mean, I don't even think of it like that. I just put the tape on and say, is this a problem? And I see a team that threw for 441 yards, and I'm going, that's a problem. That's a good challenge for us. And so, you know, I mean, those, those issues are for like, you know, off-season, AD level, all those type of things. Um, so I just look at what they do well, and they're going to create some problems for us, and how are we going to try to stop those and get better? Because some of these things that, that Georgia State will do, we're going to see again. It's always, uh, you know, whatever our weakness is, is going to be part of our opponent's game plan this next week. That's how it always is. And so we got some things to sure up from the first couple weeks. We'll see some of those things. I've already seen them on tape that they do. And so hopefully we can be ready to, to counter that. You a little bit on their quarterback, 
just what, what you've seen of him and what kind of passer he is and those kind of things? I mean, he threw about four or five passes in there that I'm like, wow, off this last game. Um, that I haven't seen us throw any in like that. And it was of the Eastern, Cal Eastern Washington caliber. I mean, balls down the seam, covered well, put on the money, caught well. And again, it's like, I don't know how we'll defend that if they throw like that, because that's a perfect throw and perfect catch. And I saw a few of those. So um, I think they do a good job on offense. They got a diverse package, spreading you out, mixing up. They got a nice old run game. And they throw it all over the place. And so it's a good blend. And I think they're starting to do some really good things much about him coming out of junior college I did not you know I mean I just kind of goes to show you there's just a lot of good players out there and they get them in the right system and get coached up they can do some pretty special things how much more do you want to get John Ross involved or is it just gonna kind of evolve is it well we'd like to get him involved as much as we can I mean uh you know it's unfortunate the one kickoff had to come back and you know that's pretty good and trying to get him different touches. And what we need to do is get other guys involved too. So it's just not all about you know, him or one other guy. And then that makes us a little bit harder to defend. Was that a legit call? Yeah, it was. Yep. Did you, did you notice the referees throwing flags late in that game on Saturday? No, I didn't really know. I mean, sometimes they can't get out of their flag out of their pocket or something. I noticed a lot of flags. I didn't notice so many late. Yeah. There were 15 combined in the second quarter. Yeah. For yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, some of it's judgment, you know, we always say sometimes the best block is no block. So there's a couple of those, a little bit of technique things. And, uh, you know, between the combination of those two things, I think we just got to clean it. This is frustrating. Frustrating is all get out for a coach. It really is. And, you know, that can affect the game. I always go back to this, though, and there's no, nothing that, you know, I mean, I know when I was a play caller back in the day, nothing can irritate you or throw you off than a penalty to get you out of your rhythm. But with that being said, and you guys know this as well as I do, you know, not a huge correlation between penalties and winning. Um, and so the kids got to play aggressive. I, the ones that you don't like are just the ones that are like, you know, stupid penalties, you know, playing aggressive. I mean, anytime a guy's around the sideline, that's a real, like, caution area around the quarterbacks a caution area um, you know anything up high those are just so you got to play hard physical fast but you also got to always play smart you guys had a sideline warning i think saturday it's probably on me uh i don't know can't stand the rule you know you think you're back and and uh yeah i don't know Siler as a passer where does he stand out and where can he grow um yeah, good question. I think accuracy, he can grow. I mean, I think all of our guys, I think that's such a big thing. I think he's not a bad decision maker. I mean, those are the things. There's, there's probably five fundamental things that we kind of always look at, but I kind of always go back to decision making and accuracy. Um, and so I'd maybe like to see him a little bit, uh, a little bit more accurate on occasion. I do, you know, great deep balls. But a lot of times when those balls are going out to those bubble screens and those things, those are harder to complete or harder to execute like we need them executed than just by sitting in the stand. Those aren't pinpoint. They don't come out pretty quick, and they're not right on the money. They're usually not going to get you what you need to get. You know, it's kind of an extension of a run play. And if it doesn't lead that receiver, there's usually guys out there, if, if he has to stop his feet, reach back for it, it's usually not going to be what we need to get. So I think the accuracy would be something that we could really – always hone in on. Can you talk about what led to the decision to make him the captain for this game week? What, what is he? Yeah, I think he's just been doing a great job since we've had him back in the mix. I think he's been very into it. He's been a really good teammate. He's been producing, kind of all those things. And we, you know, we just like to, we like to mix that up as much as we can. Um, we think it's an honor. We don't want to just uh, hand somebody the captain torch, but if guys are doing things to help this team, um, Shoot, it could be in the in the locker room, but it's usually a combination of playing decently and and helping our team uh, go in the right direction. Well, that piece aside, uh, what do you think of uh, Dante Pettis's punt returning so far? Yeah, I think Dante's done a nice job. Um, I think he's going to continue to get better. I think he's going to grow with confidence. We kind of saw that in practice when we did some a little bit of live uh, punt returning in the fall, and he kind of he kind of was a fearless guy. You know, he had that, you could just feel it. And so 
I think he's going to become a, you know, a really good decision maker back there for us, and he's not going to be as scared to take that ball and cram it up there and break some tackles. And so I'm excited to see him continue to grow. I still think too many balls are hitting the ground back there for us. Um, that's just a, it's, it's hard in college football. I mean, I, I can't stand the punt return rules. I, I, I wish our, our punting rules, I wish they were NFL, like the NFL. You know, that you, you can't go into all these multiple formations. You can't release everybody down. It's kind of taking the punt return game out of it. And uh, so it's really hard to return balls in the college game. I mean, you watch the, you know, the NFL. If you can lock down their gunners, you're going to have a good chance to get something done. And I think it's an exciting part of the game. And so for us to get a couple chances last week, to me, I was really excited. How do you, how do you coach that decision making? Especially with the young guy, you've got to instill kind of an approach. Yeah. How he makes those decisions. How do you yeah. do that? Well, we, 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 we practice it just about every day. Uh, we have a couple, we have a few technique things, and uh, we try to ingrain these technique fundamentals into their, into their body so they're not thinking about it. And so really all they're thinking about is making a good, a good decision. Can they catch the ball with technique? They need to make a decision. Uh, you know, does this need to be fair caught? And so we try to put them in those positions and practice a little bit so they can do that. And really with this fundamental, how they catch the ball with some, some technique and fundamentals, if they can't catch it with, with good technique, they shouldn't catch it. But we want every ball ca caught. I just think we have a, need to have a little bit more aggressive mindset where too many balls are hitting the ground. With the tape of Georgia State's defense, what have you seen that they do well? And so I'm still in the process of studying those guys, but they have some athletic guys that can run around, a couple of linebackers that make, you know, make a lot of tackles. Um, I'm not really at this point, when I get done, I'm going back to study their defense uh, much more in depth. But I have seen some athletic uh, things. I have seen some, you know, like everybody, they got a multiple package and figure out how to pick up their blitzes and those type of things. The decision to go with Troy instead of Jeff late in the game Saturday, was that just wanting to get him in there? Yeah, or? we're still just trying to figure out, you know, who that next guy is. And uh, I, think it's, I think it's still a real active competition. And... Um, Get him on the field a little bit. Jeff's been on the field and try to get, you know, you'd like to get Troy a few more reps than we got him last week, but it's really what it is. Now would that, that backup spot still be Jeff? So? I think, uh, I, don't th I don't know if we've decided that yet, you know. Um, I, think, I think we kind of go through the week and see where we are with those guys and kind of on Friday determine where, where we go, f depending on the situation in the game, may determine that as well. What you most about your offense? Um, you know, I see, I see us getting more efficient at some of the things that we've been working on for a while. Um, I think we're getting into a little bit of a rhythm. I think those things uh, are pretty good. And when they start to hone in kind of to our base packages, we'll be able to build off. You know, we're just not there yet in terms of being able to build off some things. We still, we still got to sure up some base details before we can start to really get into other things. And we're making progress there. How much have you put in of your offense and what you want to run? I don't really know what that number is. I just know every week there's stuff that's like, this would be really good to do. But if we don't have like some of the stuff that is kind of our base, so to speak, package, it's hard to say, well, let's go add this on. And, you know, we're the jack of all trades and not good at anything. What's the process on deciding what you guys wear? Wait, what? Where, is that your ball? No, I think it's already done. I think we got some players together with, with Bart, uh, our equipment manager, and I think it's already scripted out for the most part. And uh, I just like the ones we went in. So they can wear whatever they want to wear as long as we keep, keep winning. But would, you, would you rather just have the traditional gold helmet every game, or do you, do you I, like changing? I think I'm a little bit more of a traditionalist. I really like this helmet, the old gold helmet and the stripe. I mean, I, I, I do like that. But I think the kids like the variety and the recruits love the variety. And so if those guys like that and it's really important to them, I'm all about that. What goes into your decisions on gadget plays? Uh, I mean, down and distance, obviously, are part yeah. of it. And so it's usually down and distance, uh, field position you know, where, where we want to run some of those things. And then I think a lot, a lot of it just comes down to, the, after that, just the feel for the, by the play caller, Jonathan, you know, Coach Smith, and when he's feeling, hey, this might be a good time to, 
to try this. I mean, they're, you know, the nice thing about them is they're usually fun. The kids enjoy practicing them. And there's a chance for you know, a big play off them. And when they do, you look really good. And when they get blown up, you look like, what in the world are you doing? And, uh, you know, they're kind of hard to practice, too. They're hard to get good at because you can usually get it one time on your defense or your scout team, and you really need more reps probably than one time. And so to get the look that you want, and so there's a little bit of an art and a trick to practicing them that uh, we're still kind of working through as well. So the offense as a whole, the running backs have had a lot more success versus the quarterback. Is that kind of what you favor, having the running game set the tone and the offense complement, the, the quarterbacks complement the offense, or vice versa? In terms of the quarterbacks running the ball? So the overall offense, having the running backs set the tone and the quarterback just being kind of like an additional set in terms of passing. Well, I think most guys, you know, a lot of people feel, um, you know, they like a balanced attack. And when you think about that, if you can run the ball, everything else is set up off it. And so when we can't run the ball, uh, those are hard days for us. Um, and so one complements the other. And to us, it kind of does start with the run game. You comfortable on that? So are you comfortable with the, in general, with a quarterback, 10 or 12 design carries a game? Or? Well, we need to be smart and careful with that. There's no question. And there's some quarterback runs that we've really liked that we've thrown out to say, you know, I, I don't know if this is one that we want to, you know, there's probably a good chance he's going to take a, you know, a good shot on this. I think you got to be smart down in distance, feel position wise and be choosy about him. And I think that the quarterback himself needs to be really smart and crafty of not getting hit, of knowing how many yards I can get and then get out of bounds or get down. And I think Siler did a better job this game than he did the first game. You may have already addressed this. I'm sorry, have you talked to him, Siler, about how he holds the football on his runs? Yeah, we have been talking about that. And we can't just talk about it. You know, we got to drill it so it becomes, again, a fundamental a habit that, you know, we can't say, Siler, I told you that, you know, for the last three weeks, which we have. But we've also been working on, you know, the drills of tucking that away. And so we're just not there yet where, you know, it's, it, it, it's not quite as easy because he'll come out of there and, uh, you know, after a read, sometimes it's a, it's a run pass option. And so he's, you know, used to carrying it in this position. And when he goes, he needs to really change that position. And we just, we gotta, that's gonna be some work in progress. That's not easy for a guy that carries it like that a lot and we need to reprogram him, but we have to, because you can see that one coming for the last couple of weeks. Morning, yep. Yeah. All right, thanks everyone. Okay, thank you guys.